dear, you have been through a lot. Are you sure you're okay? Those kids did what? Oh, I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Now, dear, this is what I want you to do. I want you to explain it all to me again, right from the start. If there were any way I could take them, I would. We've got a couple of our own, and um, my husband lost his job a month ago. I, I understand. Mr. Arnold, have you been able to reach the children's father? We're trying, Your Honor, but so far we've been unable to reach him. Even if you do find him, we don't want anything to do with him. Why not? Rather live with him than some weirdos we don't even know. How can you say that? He hasn't even come to see us. He doesn't care about us. You don't know the whole story. Oh, and you do. Okay, just just calm down. Uh, Mrs. Forsythe, what happened to the father? They uh, separated about four years ago. And, uh, well, Louise never did hear from him. Yeah, when it got too rough, he left. Any other family? Uh, no, Your Honor. What about Uncle Jack? They keep talking about an uncle, but we sure don't have anything on him. I see. Under the circumstances, we have no alternative but to place them at Thompson Hall. They can stay there until foster homes are found for them. Well, wait a minute. You're not talking about splitting us up, are you? I'm sure that everything will be done to keep you together. But... That's not likely to happen. We're not being split up. We can make it on our own. Yeah, all the time Mom was sick, we took care of her and us. We know you're just trying to help, but we'll do fine, really. 
Mitch has a paper out, and, and Kate knows how to cook and wash clothes. I'm sorry. It's just not that simple. Have you uh, made the necessary arrangements for Mrs. Robin's belongings? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Well, come on, kids. The judge is a busy man, and we can talk about this later, okay? Come on, Ralph! Ralph! You gotta go now, Ralph. I hope you like it at that place we're going to. <sighs> Sorry, Travis, but you won't be able to take the dog. Is that true? They can't take him away, can they? Yeah, what's the big deal? It's not like he's gonna bother anyone. Sorry, son. Rules are rules. They just simply don't allow pets. <laughs> Come on, Travis. You're only making it hard on yourself. You make sure he has a good home. Yeah, I'll bet. Right in the nearest dog pound. Shut up, bitch. It's okay, Trav. We're not gonna take him to the pound. Look, maybe Harold and I could take the dog at least until we can get him a permanent home. Hey, Travis, come on. We'll find him a good home, I promise. Time. Stop raising such a ruckus. Now, Mr. Arnold's on his way up to see you. Then I want you boys back to your rooms, then the light's out. Do you understand? There's Buckman. These kids have been giving me nothing but fits since they got here yesterday. <laughs> I pity their fosters. If they ever get any. What do you think looks when you behave that way? You think some family's got to come down here and take you home? They were only jumping on the beds. There's nothing to do around here. How much longer do you got to stay here anyway? Well, you'll be starting school tomorrow. And I'm sure everything will work out. In the meantime... Looks like your little sister will have a good home. What are you talking about? Well, she's being placed in a home tomorrow. No way. Are they just going to take her? We didn't agree to that. Now, hold on a minute. Why don't you think what's best for Lori? It's a good family. And she'll be much better off in a good home. How do you know what's best for Lori? You don't know her. I know it's not easy. It's not the end of the world. I'm sure you'll be able to see her. That's not the same. Well, she'll be leaving first thing in the morning. Well, I gotta be going. You boys get to your own rooms. Get some sleep. What's gonna happen to us? I don't want him to take Lori. I think it's time we got out of here. What if we do get out? What then? We go to Uncle Jack's. He'll be able to tell us where Dad is. How are we gonna get there? Mom's car. The extra key is in the glove box. Who's gonna drive? You. Sure, why not? No way, Mitch. You've never driven in your life. Sure I have. Name once. In the parking lot behind the mall. How about the bumper cars at Magic Mountain? I don't know. So you want him to take Lori away? You know Travis will be next. Yeah, I'll probably have to go to Russia or someplace like that. Come on, Kate. What do you say? Tomorrow will be too late. You know this is crazy. I know. But so is staying here. What did I 
I tell you? Boys, get to your room now. Looks like this is our only way down. Okay, hand me the suitcase. Oh, oh dang it! Okay, hand me Lori. Come on. Come on! by myself. See anything? 
Nothing. It'll take us by the train station. Our house isn't too far from there. How far is it? It's a long way. We better get going. Come here, Laura. I'll carry you. Hello, Arnold. They what? Oh, oh how long ago? Oh. Well, they couldn't have gotten far. We'll be right down. Bye. I love you, Mitch. I love you, too. You take good care of your brothers and sisters. Don't worry, Mom. I will. Ralph! Ralph! Nine dollars. Come 
on, Chav. He must be inside. Let's try the front. We don't have time. We're not going without Ralph. Don't you dare go up there. What's wrong with you? There's cops up there now. Shut up. Jack Glover. That's it. It's uh, the Robin's children, isn't it? I'm afraid so. I understand you know them. Yes. Louise was my best friend in the world. Are the kids okay? Well, not exactly. his uncle was and didn't tell the authorities <laughs> what did he intend to do drive there himself on nine dollars oh no <sighs> give me the key in the glove box are you sure about this so negative. I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. Is 
Besides, I'd rather stay with Uncle Jack than Dad. Maybe he doesn't know where Dad is, and he'll take us. Wouldn't that be great? You wish. He's probably got a family of his own by now. It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> I swear we've been by here. We can't even get out of L.A. Just be patient. We'll get it this time. How come we're getting off the freeway? Not as many cops. Yeah, I guess this will still take us to Arizona. in the paper cups. Oh, I couldn't get them, because we need gas soon, and I don't want to waste money. But who wants a picnic? I do! Yay! Hey! Hey! All they got is the zip code. What'd you say that guy's last name was? I didn't. They, they never told me. Well, can you tell me where that zip code's located, please? Thanks a lot. I guess we'll head in that direction. Looks like you might as well get your bags packed. Bags? Yeah, we'll be heading to Arizona. Oh, no. Oh. All the turkeys in the world. How did I get hung up with this hamster going to Arizona? Here. Hey, I built a little fixing up. We could move in. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we go out for hamburgers tonight? Not enough money. You yeah. said we had plenty. How much is that? $125. $125. Sounds like enough to me. No. One dollar and twenty-five cents. A dollar and twenty-five cents? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Why should both of us worry? What if we need gas? I got a few ideas. Yeah, I'll bet. We better stay on these back roads so we don't see any cops. Everything will be fine when we get to Uncle Jack's house. Hey, look at this old, old bottle. Okay, I'm back. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They were in the middle of nowhere, and they didn't have any money, only a dollar twenty-five to get to Mr. Glover's, and they were out of gas. Oh, you were? Say, wasn't that the day you phoned and said, I'll be back home on Friday? Mom, it looks like I should be back in St. Paul no later than Friday. Friday? Well, I'm going to stop off at a couple of Indian reservations and pick up some souvenirs for my students. How are Frank and Judy? They're fine, and your grandkids are growing like weeds. Speaking of kids, how are Mingo and Jingo? Oh, these dogs are worse than kids. Oh, I hope you're home on Friday. I'm not sure I can stand them much longer. I know, Mom. You're doing a great job. What happened with that orthodontist your brother fixed you up with? Well, he just wasn't my type. 
Honestly, I get so frustrated when you say that. You know you're not getting any younger. Look, Mom, I'm perfectly happy being single, and I've really got to get back on the road again. So I'm going to run for now, and I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Okay, okay bye. Okay, love you. Bye. All right, now, here's the plan. We pull in, and when they ask where Dad is, we'll tell him he's in the men's room. I don't know, Mitch. Trust me. Now, no talking. Just play it cool. How do you play it cool? Well, pretend like you're asleep. Okay, get in the back gate. Sound like I'm sleeping. Right now. Uh-oh. Mitch! Mitch! What's wrong? Look at the sign in the window. Who's paying for this? Uh, uh, my dad. He's using the phone. Is that really our dad? No, stay down. His mother taught him better than to steal. Mitch said he'd been taking care of this family. Now surely they could have stopped somewhere to earn gas money. I don't know about this old highway. Well, shouldn't be any cops. What if it comes to a dead end or something? You worry too much. Are you all right? Yeah, why? You look tired. Not me. Do you want the last sandwich? No, better save it for Lori and Trev. They'll probably want something in the morning. If you get tired, promise me you'll pull over. I'm fine, really.
happened? I pulled over for a rest. Good idea, Mitch. from there. Come on now. You pulled over for a rest, huh? You fell asleep, didn't you? I guess dying out here is better than being split up, huh? This was your idea to run away. Now what are we gonna do? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Just shut up, Kate. You guys, look at me and Ralph found. This is side two of the ancient Anasazi. Somewhere between the 13th and 14th century, the Anasazi disappeared. You guys, look! Is everything all right up there? Who is that? I don't know. Shh, everyone be quiet, I'll take care of this. Mitch, we need help. Don't worry, I won't screw up. Did you have an accident? Mitch fell asleep. What? Um, we ran out of gas and my dad went to get some. We're just waiting now. Well, why are you so far off the road? Well, he thought it would be safer up here. How long has he been gone? Oh, I'd say a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Yeah, we're getting kind of worried about him. Can you kids make it down here? We'll go see if we can find your dad. We're trying to something. Come on, let's go get it. Be careful coming down. Maggie, finding those kids out there must have been something. Oh, and that's, oh, darn it. Hold on, Peggy. I'm making a mess here. <laughs> you know that story of Mitch's. Goodness sakes alive, that boy ought to be taught. 
That line is like playing with fire. He could get burned. Oh, good heaven's sakes, hold on. Oh, darn it. Oh, oh no. Oh. <coughs> oh, goodness, goodness sakes. Peggy? Oh, Peggy, honey, I, I'm back. <coughs> oh, no, no, it's just a little smoke, <coughs> you know, from the oven. <coughs> of course I'm all right. Now, dear, I want you to tell me what happened next. Are you absolutely sure that he came this way? I think so. There's not another town 30 miles from here. Well, that looks like a gas station up there. Why don't you guys wait here, and I'll go in and see what I can find out. I like Peggy. Yeah, she's nice. I don't know. I think maybe she's suspicious. Oh, this is just great. No luck. They haven't seen your dad. Well... Why don't you just take us to the next town and drop us off? We'll be fine. Oh, come on, I wouldn't do that. Why don't you hand me my purse and uh, I'll check with the police. That's what I was afraid of. Get out of here. Mitch, what are you doing? Kate, she's calling the police. We're gonna all end up going back to LA. Hey, where are you going? That's my car! Those little beggars. The sure hand is better than the bug. Oh, it's no big deal. Mitch, we're in trouble. I'm sure Piggy's called the police by now. Well, by the time the police catch up with us, Uncle Jack will explain everything. I gotta go potty. I'm starving. Me and Travis will go get something to eat. Yeah, what are you gonna get for a dollar twenty-five? It'll be a surprise, right, Mitch? Yeah. As soon as they showed four missing kids on the six o'clock news, I knew they must be the ones. Well, we appreciate your help. Looks like it won't be long now, huh? Thank you. 
But she got the jackpot. It looks like hamburgers and shakes tonight. I, I just put the quarter in and I got the... We gotta get out of here. There's over 50 bucks in there. Food says we can have hamburgers and milkshakes. Hmm, how about some banana cream pie? Let's have it. What are you talking about? The quarter you found just now. It's mine. You're lying! Come on, let's have it. Get back, man! I had 18 strikeouts in the All-Star game. I thought it was 15. Shut up. Come on, just give it to him. It's not worth it. No way! Why don't you just be smart like your little sister, kid? Shed, get back! No! Thanks for the ride. I appreciate it. Oh, this is the thanks that I get. Not even real. It's just like my friend Mike, see? Thanks, Peggy. He thought we were finished. You. You stole my car! You stole my car after I was trying to help you! Don't you kids think that I have anything better to do than go traipsing around the country trying to help someone who doesn't even appreciate it? We had no choice. What do you mean you had no choice? Where is your father? We don't know. You told me. We lied. You lied? Now you listen to me, and you listen good. I'm going straight to the police unless I find out exactly what's going on here. Do I make myself clear? Just think what might have happened if you hadn't found them. And they told the truth. Oh, good for you. You gave them a piece of your mind, and they needed that and a good dose of discipline as well. And after all that, you agreed to help them find their dad. Oh, wonderful. Okay, let's get going, you guys. It's getting late. I think we need to find a place to stay tonight. I'll be happy to drive. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks anyway, Mitchie. Well, what do you think? Should we grab a bite to eat here? Well, at this hour, it wouldn't appear that we have a huge variety of choices. Travis, why don't you turn the TV off? I want to talk to you guys about something. Before we get to your Uncle Jack's house tomorrow, I think it's important that you understand something. I was just wondering if it had occurred to you that 
Even if your Uncle Jack knows where your dad is, that he might not want to... Your dad might not be able to take care of you. Well, why wouldn't he? I'm sure when he finds out what happened to Mom, he'll let us stay with him. Well, of course, that's what we would hope for. <sighs> but there's no guarantee of that. I mean, after all, you told me that he'd left almost four and a half years ago and that you haven't heard from him since. Well, Uncle Jack will take care of us. We know he will. And what if he doesn't? Do you have a family and kids? No, Travis, I don't. Don't you get kind of lonely? Travis, that's none of your business. That's okay. Look, all I'm trying to say is that if your dad can't take care of you, and if your Uncle Jack can't take care of you, then I don't know what other choice you have but to go back to the children's hall. Now you sound just like everyone else. We're not being split up. That's all there is to it. Well, it's getting late and we have a big day ahead of us, so what do you say we get some shut-eye? Come on, Mother, come over here and get in bed with me. And I'm gonna help tuck you in. And I want you to have sweet dreams. My mom always needs to be a bedtime story. Oh, she does, huh? How about Jack and the Beanstalk? Yeah, that's a pretty cool one. Okay. Once upon a time, far, far away, there lived this place. Smell something burning. I'm sorry about the radiator. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Looks like my lucky day.
Looks like you could use a lift. You're the best news I've had all day. Come on, kids, let's get some of our bags. Have a nice day. Hi, I'd like to speak to Jack Glover, please. Mr. Glover, he can't come up to the door right now. Would you please tell him that his nieces and nephews have come all the way from Los Angeles? Please, come in. I'll see if he can come up. Thank you. You can take a seat in the living room. Excuse me, excuse me just a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, Kate. Hi, Uncle Jack. Hi, how are you, sweetheart? What a pleasant surprise this is. Hey, Mitchie, how are you, pal? Yes. What's going on? Hey, and you must be Travis, huh? Hey, this is quite a place, Uncle Jack. Well, thank you. Uh, you were just a little guy last time I saw you. What's this been, like uh, four or five years, huh? Are those your planes out there? They sure are. You want to go take a ride in them? Are you serious? Absolutely am, huh? Hi! And you weren't even around last time I saw your family. Are you my Uncle Jack? Yeah, I sure am, yes. This is my friend Peggy. Well, hi, Peggy. <laughs> How are you? Hi. hi. I'm Jack Glover. I'm Peggy Williams. Where's Louise? So anyway, my biggest nightmare was getting here and finding out there was no Jack Glover. Uh, Jack, will you be long? Everyone's asking for you. They'll do just fine without me, huh? I want you to meet Travis and Mitch and Kate and Lori and Peggy Williams. Peggy, this is Trish Waddell. Hi, how do you do? Pleased to meet you. So what brings you to Red Bluff? Well, it's a long story. Maybe we should come back later when you don't have so much going on. Absolutely not. You've come along. Hey, Jack, the four-wheeler's out of gas. I need the keys for the gas tank. Why don't we just give it a rest, huh? Why don't you take Mitch and the rest of the kids out to the barn and show them a new cult? And let them feed the mother some carrots. What about the four-wheeler? Would you just do what I ask, please? You get the gas later? Mom, do I have to? Come on, Rhett, dear, run along. I'll get you a surprise later, okay? 
You guys coming? See. Now see, darling, how easy it is to handle Rit. All you have to do is say the right thing. Look, I'm sorry for barging in at such an inopportune time. I really am. But for the sake of these kids, I need to get this problem solved. What on earth is going on, Jack? These kids are searching for the father. Well, what does that have to do with you? I know where he is. <sighs> but it's not good news. He's in Phoenix, but he's in prison. And he won't be up for parole for two to three more years. I don't know what I'm going to tell the kids. How about the truth? After what they've been through, I just don't know if I can do that. Well, I don't know what other choice we have. I mean, under the circumstances, I don't think we have any other alternatives but to phone the authorities. Do you have any idea what it's going to do to those kids when I tell them that they have to go back to that place they just came from? Yeah. Mr. Glover, as their only relative, I had hoped that you would feel a little responsibility for them. What on earth is she talking about? You've never said anything to me about these kids. That's because I'm not their real uncle. Sam and I were best of friends growing up. And Mitchie started calling me Uncle Jack when he was just a child. So you see, Jack does not have the legal responsibility to even take these kids. That is not the issue here. Well, what is the issue? You're not thinking of taking the kids, are you? You pretty? Come on, boy. How old is he? It's not a he, it's a she. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a horse before? Yeah, on TV. Where are you from? Los Angeles. What's her name? Ladybug. Ladybug, that's a cool name. Uh, hand me some carrots, would you? I'm the only one that can feed her. Uncle Jack said we could. What's this Uncle Jack bit? He doesn't have any nieces or nephews. You want to bet? Yeah. Hey, what's your problem? Just give me the carrots. You want them? Come get them. Fine, right, no big deal. Change my mind. place I'd clean your plow. I'll be back. Come on. Do you know what that was? Mud? Yeah, green mud. <laughs> I'll make the arrangements to get them back. Why don't I just fly them back? No, no, that's okay. This is something that um, I need to take care of. Well, look, it's too late to start back now. Why don't you and the kids just stay here tonight? If 
if I don't pull them away from this place now, I may never be able to. I'll just find a place in town. You sure? Yeah, thanks anyway, though. Well, why don't I just get you a ride back? Yeah, thanks. That'd be nice. Rich? What on earth? Oh, poor dear. Oh, no, that's My nose, bad. I think it's busted. Oh, coming from behind. I was even looking. What is this? Well, I haven't been around ranches all that much, but I'd say it's horse manure. You know, Jack, it's a good thing those kids are leaving. Come on, dear. Let's go upstairs. Change your clothes. I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me. I feel like this is all my fault. Hey, it's not your fault. To tell you the truth, it's something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. To you about what happened out the ranch today. I let you know that, that I think what you're doing is very, very admirable. I'm curious. As close as you were with the family, why didn't you stay in touch with the kids after their dad left? Sam didn't leave Louise. It was just the other way around. Why would she leave him? Well, his drinking got worse, and she was concerned for the kids. And she packed up during one of his binges, and he's never found her since then. Did you tell the kids? No. Just that he's in Phoenix. Just couldn't tell him that their dad was in prison. I don't think I have any choice but to tell them the truth. I guess I'll tell them tomorrow on the bus. I'll just leave the dog in the luggage here until I get her to That's fine. Why don't you guys just wait over here? Here's your bear, sweetheart. I'm gonna go get our tickets. Can you check on getting a crate for the dog? What for? All they're gonna do is just take him away. I promise you that we'll find him a home when we get back. I'll be right back. Is the bus to LA on time? It should be here any moment. Good. I need some tickets. Uh, one adult and four children, please. Look who's here. Come on, we gotta get out of here. Mitch! Let's go hide on the bus. It's gotta be her. Yep. Are you 
Peggy Williams? Uh, yes, I am. Who are you? I'm Detective Poindexter from the Los Angeles Police Department. We've been to Mr. Glover's. He said we might be able to find you here. So what are you going to do, handcuff them like common criminals? Ma'am, we plan to take them back. That's our job. Oh, Peggy, you're kidding. Doesn't that young man ever learn? Oh, Mitch, no. We can't trust anybody. does it make whether I take them back or not? I appreciate your concern, Miss Williams, but it's my responsibility for the children, and I plan to... What? 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 Oh, no. Hey, there goes our bus. What? Someone's what taking What do you mean? Our bus. in L.A. Mitch, where are we going? What difference does it make? Oh, great. Where are they headed? Uh, looks like they're turning on the old road to Navajo Junction. No, keep going. They look like they're going to be all right. Okay. Oh. 
the station they told me what had happened is everything all right yeah i think so mitchell open the door does this mean we have to go to jail no travis you guys come on down off the bus now Take us back to LA. Come on, Mitch. Why should I? You don't care about us? All you want to do is just get rid of us so you won't feel guilty. All we're trying to do is just stay together. Is that some kind of crime or something? No, that's not a crime, Mitch. Where's the boy? Why don't we just hold off a bit here, pal? What do you mean, hold on? You're not responsible for him. We are. Well, that's, uh... It's a situation that's going to change real shortly. What are you talking about? Well, I get the idea that the kids aren't too happy with the home that you guys provided for them back in California. Personally, I think they deserve a whole lot more. And that's how come I'll be asking them to live with me. That is, if they'll have me. Really? Never been more serious. Hey, Lori, did you hear that? We're going to live with Uncle Jack. If you can handle a horse like that bus, we're in business. Hey, I'll be a big help. Really, I, I learn fast, and I'm a real good worker. Just, I will. You'll see. Can I talk to you a second?
You know, we still have our orders. We're gonna have to take the kids back. <laughs> Guys, we can work this out. Well, you and your partner, come on back to the ranch. We'll have a little barbecue, and we'll talk about the whole thing there. Come on, come on, let's do that. Ralph! Ralph! Guess what? Uncle Jack's gonna be our dad. Come on. Oh, well, what a nice thing for Jack to do. And the detective let you take the children back to L.A.? That's right, and then Jack flew out for the hearing. Oh, tell me more about that hearing. Now, let's see. The judge says that Mitch has to wait until he's 18 before he can get his license? Yes, and the judge said that he had to work at the gas station for four Saturdays to pay for the gas he stole. And he has to vacuum buses for a month. Oh, I think that's good. But there's more. Mitchie and Kate have 40 hours of community service to give, too. I know Mitch was just trying to keep the family together, but that lying and stealing. They must have had a pretty bad example from their alcoholic father. But the judge has done the right thing. I like his style. Say, is he available? <laughs> well, speaking of available, I've got a surprise for you. I know. You and Jack are getting married. Mother, how did you know that? Dear, I may be old, but I've not seen I'll. I've just finished your wedding cake. And I suppose now you'll be telling me that Jack will be here any minute to pick me up in one of his planes. Mother, how do you know such things? Oh, I'm a grandma. I give my love to those soon-to-be new grandkids of mine. And you tell that Mitch. I have an earful for him. And a hug. Goodbye, dear. I'll see you soon. Bye, Mom. I love you. <laughs>